Welcome back to the Ronnie and Ernie Show. I am Ron Williams. I'm a sommelier and wine specialist. And... I'm Ernie Zahn. I'm a filmmaker, and I'm taking physics courses on Khan Academy. <laughs> Straying a little outside your, your uh, oh, area yeah. there. Each yeah. week we get together and discuss our shared interests. And despite our very different lines of work, it's our shared interests that give us an opportunity to collaborate on various projects. So sometimes we'll talk about those things on this very podcast. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So, speaking so, of which, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I made waffles this morning. Oh, yeah? Yep. I made waffles. I, that is a recipe I've been making since I was 10. 10 years old. Where'd you get it from? Uh, an original, like the old, old, because the recipes have changed. Uh, Betty Crocker cookbook that I've kind of adapted and tweaked and changed to, to suit my needs. So I don't know if it's just, it seemed it's, it would not, you would not seem to be from the personality that we've presented over the last 12 or so episodes that you'd be one to go towards something quite that mainstream. Like Betty Crocker? Like Betty Crocker. Yeah. Is that um, is that a inaccurate assessment? Yeah, I think so. I think um, it's not like I'm buying a mix, which I'm sure you can. I'm sure there's the Betty Crocker mix. Um, right. As I you said, don't, the, you don't the like, recipes have you changed. You don't like mainstream shortcuts. I hate that. Yeah, no, I I don't. I will never bake a cake from a mix. Um, I prefer not to. They're not the worst. The worst thing you could do is ice a cake from like a pre-made icing. That's just, ugh, those are disgusting. Just loaded with chemicals. But so, in the, if you recall, uh, yeah. many moons ago, you used to love like Jerry Seinfeld level love breakfast cereal. I guess there's only yes. one kind of cereal, right? Um, no, there's 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 cereals there as in like there's if I say cereals in the spirits world, that means like. In the spirit world, <laughs> the nether world, um, <laughs> in the world of like alcohol and, and distilled Science. spirits, yeah. like whiskey and stuff like that, um, cereals uh, are like some of the tones and notes, aromas you can get with certain whiskeys and stuff. Um, it just means the grains, you know, okay. so anything with grains you could call cereals pretty much. Okay. Most people will think I'm talking about special K. But so yes, breakfast cereal. In yes. the days of when you used to have Special K and Life Cereal or whatever it was you used to have, mm -hmm. if there was a recipe on the back of the box for a different kind of baked good you could make with the cereal, is that something you would make? Um, it depends on what the cereal was. <laughs> if it were something very simple, like cornflakes or... But just the know, premise... Rice. The premise, the, the premise, premise of a is not flawed. On a box, you would, you might do it. I might try it out. Certainly, I mean, I, I've gotten. Uh, th there's a brand of chocolate, um, and oh, well, I'm blanking on the name, but uh, it's what I use to make brownies. And on the back is a one bowl brownie recipe that is really solid stuff. I mean, you, you may have to tweak it to suit your preference, but. The reason they put the recipes on the boxes is because the recipes work. If they would not put untested, untried recipes on for like serious baking stuff with the cereal, that's a little bit more uh, hit or miss. It feels like they took an existing recipe and tried to shoehorn in some of the stuff you'd get with the cereal. And sometimes I'm sure it works, but most of the time it just looks so completely unappetizing i i don't want to try like broken up crispix crusted chicken cutlets like that doesn't appeal I was thinking to me more at like, all um, like rice that, crispy squares kind of stuff oh right i mean look like rice crispy treats are a stamp oh, yeah. are like a, those are a thing those are like legitimate i would make my own marshmallows and i would try to get organic puffed rice but like that is a great dessert. 
Snack. How do you make marshmallows? I don't know. Uh, uh, you need, it's a long process. I've only ever done it once a long time ago, but it involves, um, you shape them heating. I'm sorry. Do you shape them like marshmallows, like the way they come in the bag? Uh, that is harder to do. Uh, the easiest way to do marshmallows is you heat sugar to a certain temperature. That's why you need a candy thermometer. And depending on what temperature you heat it to, it'll behave a certain way. So that's how you get everything from toffee to hard candy. If you miss the window of marshmallow, you've made glass. Like it, it's, <laughs> it does require Or um, like the, like precision. here in Albuquerque, they have the souvenir Walter White, um, Blue meth. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. You've made hard candy. Uh, so you have to get certain things right. There's gelatin and other things, but it's effectively sugar and some gelatin and a few other things. You can add, like, flavorings if you want. I just like to keep them plain. And then, like, a gourmet, quote-unquote gourmet, will usually put them into a baking sheet so that, like, that's the mold. And then they'll be cut into very, like, precise cubes. So there's very sharp edges, unlike the rounded machine-made ones you get from in a bag from but the But is it like store. the same texture and just like the same Yeah, if you do it right, that? if you do it right, it is more fluffy and there's a little bit of a chew and it doesn't taste like chemicals. Oh my and god, that's, that's like a how I would paradise. make like Oh, it's amazing. That's how I would make Rice Krispie treats and that is how I make s'mores. I will not I don't like to make s'mores with like bought marshmallows and bought graham crackers i want to make my own graham crackers and make my own marshmallow and then use really good quality chocolate instagram pastry porn would be because what what i'm imagining is marshmallows are not cut into those little bits like you have them in the bag those like those sort of like uh, rounded cylinders. Cylind- cylinders yes yeah. yeah no these are like it's, perfect squares if it's a- or, or a big Cubes. tray, just like a big boundless tray. <laughs> One gigantic s'more. They're like a sheet, a, a marshmallow sheet. Yes. Right? So a and sheet of a marshmallows, marsh- a sheet of, of graham crackers, and a, a sheet perfect, of chocolate. Perfect pastry porn for Instagram would be a sheet of chocolate, a sheet of marshmallow, and a sheet. Or so a two a gigantic of graham cracker. Yeah. If you did that as like one of those um, sped up or time-lapsed. Um, walk that would through, be really you know, fun. bird's eye view kind of down yeah. to the counter thing. Oh my God, you'd get so many views. I would love to do that too. You should definitely I would do love that. to do that. And, since and my brother, this, yeah, I challenge I'll do you. It. I'll do. Okay, all right, I'll do it. My brother insists that he prefers store-bought graham crackers in s'mores and doesn't even want to consider the thought of trying the s'mores with my graham crackers. We both at the same time experimented with this concept of vegan before six, right? Yeah, that Where was breakfast. That breakfast was, uh, and lunch. It's easy. I think it was pretty easy to make breakfast vegan. That was not complicated. Um, although yeah, I do like my meal. eggs. Oats, water. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and during that phase, you made vegan graham crackers, and I thought they were really, really good. Do you I remember did. that I recipe? Prefer, yeah, I do, but I prefer uh, the buttermilk because huh. the original recipe called for buttermilk. It just gave it a little bit more complexity there. But yeah, if you find graham flour and you do need graham flour, that huh. is the most important thing. It's very particular. You can't like – if you wanted to sub in like some combination of whole wheat and white, you could probably get close, well, it's but it will not crackers. be the same. It's not graham crackers yeah. anymore. Then it's whole wheat crackers. So it's you need graham crackers. flour. <laughs> Is there such a thing as semolina crackers? I'm sure I've seen something like that. Um, that would be addictive. Yeah. Uh, just eat pasta out of the bag. <laughs> yeah. Just I mean, <laughs> crunch I, I, I'm sort of like a Guido, Guido hillbilly or something because sometimes <laughs> when I'm cooking, I'll have the dry like stem of linguine or something out of my mouth like it's straw <laughs> well around these parts we don't call it gravy <laughs> pass me that fettuccine
I just watched Uncut Gems. Have you seen this yet? Have you heard of I've it? I've heard of it. I, I haven't seen it. Uh, Adam Sandler? I was reluctant to watch it um, uh, because, well, I don't know why I was reluctant to watch it. I think it was just something I wouldn't actively, based on yeah. based on how it was marketed, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not something I would necessarily look for. Um, I thought it was more like sports entertainment, drama. Um I would say that that's the sports entertainment aspects are kind of just a device for a completely different story. It's it's like it's a it's a contemporary adaptation of Faust in some ways. You know this old story, really? it's a fable almost. Yeah, yeah. At this point, deal with the devil. Right, make a deal with the devil and just the obsession with what you're getting from the devil. It's it's you know, it's connected to this idea of just, you know, that there's never enough and it and it ends up being your destruction. Um it was phenomenal. Really? Um, yeah, it was. It was really well done in a lot of different ways. It was. It was such a. In it, it was a simple story. Um, with really complex characters and very complex. Not in, not in a difficult to watch way. I just mean that it's it's a very you know. How complex um, are we talking? Like Game of Thrones? I don't know this not, guy's name. Complex? It's not, or it's not complex in terms <laughs> of the amount of information they present or how cerebral the uh, content is. It's more just the the complexity of detail in visual information. If you're enjoying the story and you're engaged, it's not something you'd necessarily notice. But if you want to pick it apart, there's a lot to discover, and there's a lot hmm. to appreciate. Uh, from the color palette to, um, you, you know, um, I think you showed this YouTube channel to me and I've mentioned it before, Nerd Writer. Yes. Who does sort of like analysis uh, or essays, video essays on different concepts in art and po- yep. politics and stuff like that. Um, so he had one about um, Noah Baumbach, who's an independent filmmaker. He did uh, the most recent one, which is, I think, probably maybe his most mainstream film is Marriage Story. Anyway, he made a film a couple of years ago um, with, uh, let's see, Ben Stiller and Dustin Hoffman. And the it was sort of like a case study about the concept of people speaking more naturally in scenes and film. So the way... As opposed to what? What do you mean? Well, I mean, the way exposition plays out in a film, especially if it's like a big tentpole film, it's it's presented in a way that is in service to clarity for the audience and also to move the action, but it's not necessarily the way people talk. Like you and I, even going through this podcast, we talk over each other a lot. Yeah, don't nobody talks to. over each other in a in a movie. <laughs> We're also not well versed in a, you know a life in show business, so our our communication's not practiced in that way. Um, mm. You know, uh, so he used this film that Noah Baumbach made as an example of of people talking naturally, and you know, if you have a character who's very involved in themselves, they might talk over you, or just the way they respond, or what they respond with kind of indicates the fact that they weren't really listening to the other person. You've ever, I mean, I mean, I've I've caught myself plenty of times where I realize, or sometimes I don't even realize it. I'm not really paying attention to the person. I'm very, because I'm really hyped on whatever I'm thinking about um, or what I want to share that I don't realize that um, I'm not contributing something that's a response to what they're saying. It's more like, I just want to, I don't want to get my turn in, you know? Mm, that's great. Ang- Did you hear about? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so this film, this film does that in in a way, but it's almost like all the voices shouting at each other. It it's incomprehensible, and you realize you're not. You don't need to focus on what they're saying. It's more about what the takeaway is from that exchange. Um. Whether he's trying to pawn something, or he's talking with some people about a bet, or um, or something else, it's it's the combination of action and expression, like in people's faces, and 
the tones of their voice rather than the specific words they're saying. Um, mm. It's not like that throughout the whole film, but there are lots of instances like that where you see, like, you ever go to, so it's he's like a, he's a jewelry dealer in New York, and you ever been mm-hmm. to, like, one of those shops in New York, not necessarily a jewelry not. store, but, like, okay, you know even those, like, kind of touristy stores where it's oh, like, like something in Times reflective Square. mirrors and it's like thousands yes, yeah, yeah, of yeah, cameras. Of you ever yeah, walk yeah, into yeah, one yeah. of those and it's just everybody yes. shouting over each other and stuff yep. like that? All you need to take away from that is the <laughs> deals trying to be made, right? Yes. It, yeah. the, the, the individual stuff, it's all, just, it's all just fuel for that objective, right? That's yeah. all you need to get out of that situation. Exactly. There's, there, are, there are instances like that. And so I thought that was a really fascinating way to, uh, you know, present present material. It's not presented in this very traditional way where it's like I I contribute an, an idea, then the opposing character contributes an idea, and everything is well spaced and well balanced. And it's not like that. It has meticulously it has, planned. Right. It has a greater um, fidelity in that it seems more true to the way the situation might play out in that jewelry store in. I think it. I think it was Manhattan. Mm. Um, and so, uh, recommend that movie. I definitely recommend that movie. And you know, if you like Adam Sandler movies or you don't like Adam Sandler movies, this is not an Adam Sandler movie. This is a movie that Adam Sandler is starring in. Okay, it's completely this different. Not, <laughs> it's yeah. not Billy Madison. Star no, Star no, have that expectation. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, and and to be honest, I forgot. I forgot it was him. Wow, you know, that's, a, that's a good performance then. Which is a testament, yeah, to his performance for sure. Uh, um, I immediately thought of when you were saying like authenticity of conversation. Because you weren't paying attention. Yeah, go ahead. Of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Because to me, yeah. that is that's a very I, like, or get, like they're, they are having a conversation that has not been planned. And it's very like, it's chaotic in some senses. Because and, it's, they're just coming up with it. And they, they definitely, from what I've understood from that show, they improvise um, a certain amount of it. They have a plan. They have objectives. I hmm. wonder with this film, especially since it's a narrative fiction feature film, it's not a TV show. It's not something that they're producing at high volume. Yeah. Um, if those situations were improvised, and I don't, I don't. I don't wonder that for the same reasons that, you know, people like, oh, do you think Arrested Development is improvised too? Just because it's like, it's, it's got such a great rhythm. People think that it's just like these in- incredible performers who just like caught a high, you know, and they document it yeah, or something yeah. like that. I'm thinking about it more from the standpoint of some of the multiple conversations that are going on in this film are so complicated that you kind of have to accept that you're just you're just trying to take away what is trying to be achieved here, right? Instead of paying attention, instead of worrying about the words. But if it wasn't improvised, I can't imagine how maddening it must have been. I mean, or how must I, I, I would have felt if I had to write that as a script, right? Mm-hmm. If it wasn't <laughs> <Intense>. improvised. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. Or or just are being able to read it. I don't even know how you'd format that Actually, for it to like... make sense, because it would take you, it would take you three times as long to read it as it would to perform it, and I've heard from different directors who writer directors, or screenwriters even, you know, three to five pages a day on average for writing a screenplay, especially if it's the first draft and you're just kind of getting all the ideas from an outline expressed Mm -hmm. um sometimes more sometimes less (laughs) i i can't i feel like it would take me a page a week if it was my my full-time job to just get just to capture all that stuff if it was written and not improvised wow makes you wonder i yeah it's not something i see very often but Mm. i recommend it it's on netflix right now uncut gems and it's an A24 film. And I think of all the film companies out there right now, you know, like 
nobody sees, oh, I want to see the latest, you know, Warner Brothers movie or something like that. And you just instantly yeah. watch all movies by Warner Brothers, whether it's Batman or it's a terrible rom-com with Gerard Butler or something, you know, <laughs> just because you're so brand loyal. I mean, A24, I feel like, is one of the few companies where there's, there's some brand loyalty and brand awareness. They made Moonlight. They're, do, they do that show Euphoria, I believe, on... Um, uh, HBO? On HBO, yeah, mm-hmm. um, and they did uh, Lighthouse recently with um, Willem, Willem Dafoe. Dafoe. I still haven't seen that. Yeah, and um, mm. I'm blanking on his name now. Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Pat- Patters- Patterson. Patterson. I think it's Pattinson. Pattinson. Yeah. Okay. Which I had never seen him in anything before. I'd never seen The Twilight, so I had I never had that <laughs> negative opinion either of like you know like oh it's teen whatever blah blah blah. I had I had just no opinion because I'd never seen him act in anything. His, so I'm in Harry his Potter. performance was phenomenal in that. I didn't. I did, I think I stopped watching Harry Potter by the time he came in. Hmm. I saw the first three Harry Potters. The the best the best ones. <laughs> the two that were by Home Alone director Christopher Columbus. Yeah, he, and, and then, th- those are the ones with the uh, with uh, Jared Harris as. Is it Jared? Richard Harris as uh, Jared is his son. Richard Harris as Dumbledore. Mm. He's amazing. And then uh, Alfonso Curion did the third one, Prisoner of Azkaban. Is that right? I think so. I think so. Directors are not my uh, my forte, but um, yeah, the third was weird. It, it was a, a definite departure from from one and two one and two seemed like they just took the book and everything about it was in and it was just word for word it's like all right this is exactly how you would imagine it and there's a lot of continuity between one and two because they were both directed by chris columbus when you get to three things start to get a little weird though i wonder why some adaptations do that especially ones that are longer series like game of thrones I mean, part of it for Game of Thrones was there wasn't another book available, so they had to work Make with, shit up. you know, his notes and decide to take and leave what they want and all that. But I wonder if sometimes, especially when it's a series and it's committing to multiple books to adapt and they're, they're making the promise that that's what they're going to be doing, that they want to establish some kind of loyalty by building a bridge and building trust on a cast and a set of creative talent so that you as the audience are willing to depart and start exploring a new interpretation. But they start with meeting you with where you know the content. Lulling you into a false sense of security. (laughs) That could be one way of looking at it. And then springing the, the awful, awful, poorly executed poorly planned um, finale. Everybody's got to take a chance. Yeah. But yeah. You I... miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> um, I, I know I said that like uh, like it should have been, I don't know, Yogi Berra or something, but but I think that was a basketball player who said that. American uh, Berra basketball. is when, when you get to the fork in the road, take it. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. else is going on in your life? That's about it. Just working, working, wine shop, a lot of rosé this time of year. And, uh, and ice cubes. Doing a lot of cooking. Rosé and, and ice, ice cubes. cubes. Why? Yeah. You ever see that? Rosé and ice cubes. I would do, I would, if it were like really hot, I was by the pool and it was like a $10 rosé that I just wanted to like feel refreshing and just wanted to drink something. I wasn't pairing it with a meal. I wasn't caring about anything like that. I'd pour it over ice. Absolutely. That's not, that's not a faux pas to you? No, not at all. If you're by the pool, if like it's hot, you want something refreshing, that's when it's like, this is a $10 rosé. It's, as long as it's from, you know, at least a halfway decent producer, it's going to be good. So just, if you don't have time to chill it, pour it over ice. 
It makes it mm. nice and refreshing. I would totally do that. I'll have to give that a now, try. Now, the, like, $40, you know, Chateau Parasol, which is some, like, crazy high, you know, independent producer, very small production, you know, expensive rosé. Yes, chill that down the right way. Don't add ice. Pair it with something good. Yeah. How do you feel about, like... So, I mean, if you put ice in it and you're not done with the drink and then as the ice melts, it begins to dilute the drink. Dilute? Yeah, dilute the drink. <laughs> uh, how, how, does that, how does that jive with your palate or your standards? Um, it, it depends. I mean... What about like alternative okay cooling devices? Okay. Like, remember Pier One used to have those like fruit shaped plastic things? You remember those? Plastic ice cubes. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's like, it's like, it's like shaped like a lemon slice or something. Uh huh. And inside is water or more likely some sort of horrible chemical. Yeah. And like an ice pack, it. like a miniature ice pack. It's basically in a little ice pack. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't toxic, want to put plastic in my drink. Toxicity aside, <laughs> like what about um, frozen fruit, like frozen berries? Oh, I've heard about that, and I would totally try that if I ever had any frozen fruit on hand. Because then, as because then as it, I don't do smoothies much anymore. Because then, as the temperature drops, it's releasing at least not just water. Yes, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Okay, I'm gonna try that then, because I have a yeah. bunch of frozen berries. All right, I have a game. Yeah? I have a little game for you. We'll just okay. do one quick round. Okay. One question. I'm ready. Um, and this is for the audience as well. We're going to wait 10 seconds and then 5 seconds. <laughs> and, then, and then we'll give the answer. You must name this film. And I will give a brief synopsis. <laughs> but the synopsis... Uh, will be from <laughs> from uh, someone who has a tenuous grasp of the plot. This is so a re- a this little, was a real synopsis. A little round of, a film, of um, what's right, this movie that from? I heard. <laughs> exactly, a little round of what's this movie from? Let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do we have to put context for that? <laughs> yeah, let's see. All right. Um, so, I had a friend. Um, and instead of, at, he would recite a movie quote and you would have to guess the film that it's from. And instead of saying, what movie is this from? He used to say, what's this movie from? And then give the quote. <laughs> All right. <laughs> did, I, did I just see a movie? <laughs> <laughs> what's this movie from? <laughs> and he starts All right. <laughs> <laughs> so this game is going to be called, what's this movie from? okay all right shall i do the impression of the person yeah okay all right so this is as i heard it okay synopsis to a film they get stuck in the rocket ship and then in the end bruce willis dies any ideas (laughs) yeah (laughs) i thought I thought you were going to do an impression of a character from the film. And I'm like, no. who talks like that in Armageddon? No. No. Hey, hi, everybody. I'm, 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 I'm going to go on the rocket ship. And I'm going to go stop this asteroid, okay? <laughs> All right. So um, I every time a joke idea comes to me, we're not professional comedians, but every time a joke no. comes to me, I... <laughs> Um, I just I just jot it down into a voice memo or something like that. Just, onto a yeah. yellow tablet. Yeah, onto my yellow tablet. <laughs> As George Lucas calls them. Yeah, George Lucas calls legal pads yellow tablets. I have some, oh, I uh, some beautiful, pristine yellow, yellow tablets. tablets. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the 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 joke is ready. Yeah. 
I like to keep my clothes wrinkly so that I look younger by comparison. <laughs> Why? You, that's like, that's not, it doesn't make sense for you to be telling that joke. Like, I picture, when I hear that joke, I picture like a 68-year-old woman in like some bar in Florida smoking a cigarette in like a, a flower print dress. Like, she's been open <laughs> micing at the same place in Miami yes. for yes. since 1976. Exactly. And she and she sounds like uh, Harvey Firestein. What's that sound like? Harvey Firestein? So he was in Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so she sounds like this. I like to keep all my clothes wrinkly so that I look younger by comparison. <laughs> he couldn't even get that. Your voice started to buckle at the end. I can't. I can't sustain that. It's also very dry. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> well, she's been smoking since the 70s. <laughs> Do an open mic. Yeah. That's also the voice she has left. Oh, um. man. The Ronnie and Ernie Show is a joint production of Triello Storytelling Company and the Bon Vivant. Our show is now available on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you like what you're hearing, then commenting, subscribing, and reviewing means that this show only gets better. I shudder to think what the comments are going to be like. <laughs> well, especially for that a few episodes back, if this is the first time you're hearing our show. Yeah. If you're just tuning in, oh boy, are you in for a surprise. <laughs> yeah, boy, are you in for a treat. All right, go ahead. Read your copy. Uh, recipes, projects, or anything we didn't have enough time to get into on today's show will be included in the show's description. And at each of our sites, you can also take a look at what we're currently up to and check out some of the amazingly talented people with whom we collaborate. Bravo. I will see you, uh, well, I will hear you next week. I'll hear you next week. I don't think we've ever established this. I'm recording this in New Mexico, and you're recording this just outside New York. Yes. And the, in the Northeast, New England, well, we call each other on FaceTime audio, and then we record our separate things, and then we smash them together. Yeah, we're not in the we same to, room together. We tried to <laughs> sync it by clapping, but we, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> with the day, with the with the second and a half delay, it just sounds like the saddest round of applause ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I will talk to you next week. <laughs> yes. And um, have have a great have a great one. It's Thank be you. Great. Have a All right. Ciao. <laughs> have some raspberries and rosé. Yes. Yes. Cheers. All right. Bye. Ciao.